scripture today, this is the beginning of the next step of the journey that Jesus takes with the disciples. And this next section of the gospel is framed by a, two stories of healing blindness. So when you're reading a story and you see that there are two stories that frame it, that means that those stories are symbolically trying to tell you something, right? That, that those stories about healing someone who is blind is meant to make a bigger point about blindness, about not being able to see. So how do we deal with this story we have? We know that Jesus has just been in the boat with the disciples where they are arguing over whether they have enough bread to eat. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people in Israel, 4,000 people in Gentile ter territories, and the disciples are arguing about bread. So Jesus talks about the yeast of the Pharisees, that they don't understand, that they are, if you follow the leaven that they're preaching, you're going to miss the presence of God in your midst. You're not going to see how God is moving in the world. You're going to miss the mystery and wonder of God in those moments. And so when they get to the other side, so now they're back in Israel, the first person they encounter is someone bringing a blind man to Jesus. And Jesus spits in his hands and touches his eyes and asks him what he can see. And he says, I can make out people, but they're like trees walking. So in other words, his vision has cleared up a little bit, but it's, it's foggy. It's not completely clear. He's gained some understanding, but he still doesn't get everything. He doesn't understand everything. And so Jesus, again, touches him, looks at him intently, and then he's able to see. So when we have these scriptures about Jesus healing the blind, we are supposed to remember that these are the promises that the prophets have made to us over and over again. That the lame will walk and the blind will see. We're to remember that Jesus, Jesus is bringing that kingdom to God alive here and now. But we're also to remember that we don't always see. And sometimes we don't even see clearly. We see people walking, but they look like they might be trees. Where are you spiritually blind? So what do I mean by this? In our Gospels, they teach us how we can live a life in the kingdom of God. They teach us how to inhabit this earth in a way that is going to set us apart from the rest of the world, is going to teach us how to live so that we experience the mystery of God. But there are spots that make us go, well, I'm not sure I've liked that one, right? I'm not sure that that point that you're making is one that I want to follow. I'm not sure that I can set aside some stuff in order to do that. So what do I mean by that? How many of you were deeply hurt by someone in the past? And forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is really hard. Sometimes you're able to let it go, but what they did was so horrendous, so horrible, that you can't forget. 
And so when Jesus tells us to forgive, and not to forgive just once, but to forgive 70 times 70, sometimes that forgiveness is hard. And sometimes it's a stumbling block for us. And sometimes not forgiving them is necessary for our peace of mind and health. So what do we do with that area in our life? How do we deal with that area where we know Jesus has said that that is part of our identity to forgive? And if it's not possible to forgive the person who's injured us, is it possible to move in a different way and help those who have been similarly injured? So that that experience, that pain, that harm that has been done to you can now be used as a means to help others. And sometimes those hurts are so deep that we have to forgive and then after we've picked it up back up, we have to forgive again and let it go. But what other areas of spiritual blindness do you have? What is the spot that stops you? Is it the idea of a magio dei? Meaning that every human, every human, is created in the image of God. If every human is created in the image of God, then how we treat every other human becomes important. That the divisions we have created along race and gender, along religion and nationality, any division that separates us and causes us to push them away and see them as enemies, as see them as not worthy, see them as not part of the kingdom of God, ignores that, right? Ignores that we are all a magio dei created in the image of God. We are all created in the image of God. Now Jesus takes that idea that we are created in the image of God and says to you, love your enemy, love your neighbor. Is that the point at which your spiritual blindness comes in? You can grant that they are created in the image of God, but to change, to act on that identity, to love enemies, to love our neighbors. Is that the point at which it becomes too hard? Is that at the point at which your identity, what you've taken on as a nationality, a gender, a religion, a political ideology, is that the point at which you push back against Jesus? Because your identity is telling you that those people aren't worthy. And Jesus is saying, love. Love your enemies, love your neighbors. Everything you do, do with love. Is that where your blinders are? As I thought about this today, I think we all have those moments and places. Now, I'm going to give you a small little one from my own life. And this is an odd one because it has no relevance whatsoever, but it's a spiritual blindness for me, right? Jesus says in the sections coming up, do not get divorced, period. Like, no questions, no decisions, don't do it, not. For me, that is a, how do I deal with that and be a pastor and be a person who says, don't do that. But I did it, right? A spiritual blindness for me. How do you live in a space where you've heard the words? And people have given me all sorts of explanations about why it's okay, because you know the four gospels deal with it differently. Some of them give you an out if the guy cheated, then it's okay for you to move on. Because Joseph tried to throw Mary aside, so then therefore it's okay for you to do that too, if they cheat. 
but it's a spiritual blinder. How does that stop then my ability to have relationships? Because what Paul goes on to say is some of you need to choose never to remarry, to live a life alone, because that allows you to work in the kingdom. Now, I don't have an answer to all these spirits of blindness, right? I struggle with the do not get divorced passage every time I hear it. I struggle with the love your enemies when I see that we have created such strong divisions in our country that we jailed this week. A woman who had a miscarriage, who is Native American in Oklahoma, and is in jail for four years because she miscarried. I struggle with laws that see people differently. Because what they, a study was done on these new laws that have been created to punish women for miscarrying, for having abortions. Because when you miscarry, you have a DNC, right? An abortion. She was on meth, but there is no correlation between when a fetus miscarries and drug abuse. Because how many of you, you know people who were drug addicts and alcoholics and had babies, right? That's, that, that correlation is not a scientific correlation, right? It's a we want it to be true correlation, but not a reality correlation. But because she was on meth, the baby was tested and had meth, she was punished under the new laws that, that she killed the baby. Spiritual blindness is not being able to see her as a complete human being. To see a mother in pain, to see a person who is broken, right? If you are on meth, something in your life happened that broke you somewhere. And instead of healing the brokenness, which is what Jesus does with everyone he encounters, instead of healing the brokenness, we punish the woman. Those are areas of spiritual blindness in us. That we don't see that woman as a magio dei, as made in the image of God, as deserving love, as deserving healing. So where are those points for you? So in that example, I have a big problem with men who make laws that don't care about women. And, and I know it's a blindness. Because Jesus tells me to love. And sometimes I get angry, right? I get angry because what does love look like if we are punishing people for their places of pain and hurt? If we're punishing people for their places of brokenness? So sometimes the blindness is on my side, and sometimes the blindness is also reflected back to me in the thing that I'm having trouble with. And what Jesus is trying to show us, and what the Gospel of Mark wants us to learn, is that we all have that spiritual blindness. Those areas in our life that rub up against the mystery that is God. Those areas where we say, yeah, but not for this, God. But what Jesus shows us in this example is that even if your slight eyes are slightly blurry, God is waiting there to come into the mystery and clear that vision for you, to allow you to see the difference to see a world 
in the kingdom of God. Can you see anything? It's a question to ask of our spiritual paths. It's a question that we have to ask of how we live out life in a broken world, in a hurting world. Can you see anything? Can you see that person in pain in front of you? Can you see those children in Glasgow that are crying out to save the earth so that they can have a future? Can you see those women who have been jailed for miscarriages? Can you see the pain of people whose family have fallen apart? Can you see those who are hurting and need of help? Can you look at your neighbor and say, you're beloved. You are a child of God loved. Can you see 